Okay, I think we can have still at least 10 or 15 minutes. Mm. I'm sorry. Oh, that, that was fine. Um, if there's any question, otherwise I have one. Okay, I have, I have one question. Uh, uh, Marlies, you were talking about um, intermediate use, share public spaces without fences, open playground. Uh, I guess that uh, uh, you must empower somehow users and citizens uh, how to manage it. How do you manage it? Because your spaces were of doing, but also of letting people empower of that. So I talked during the presentation that, that in many cases the, the specific conflict leads to a project. So um, people really need additional space because they may not use another space or um, are not allowed to, to do sports in, in the middle of the housing area. So um, this is why automatically they use the new space because they really need it. It's not that we are, that it's our idea that it would be really nice to have a new space and then we tell the children that they could come here to use it. It's the other way around. And we, um, it's the, the process that they, um, we are searching for the new places together with the, with the children, with the users. So it's the participatory effect that they are also really proud of their space because they were part of the developing process. And so this is one part why they're really good accepted and really high frequented um, spaces. And for example, with the school sports facilities, um, in sometimes it, um, they are only opened when there are also social workers or youth workers. Um, doing a program with the children. So it's not an, an, a, a space which is only there, user, accessible for everyone, but there are really people there telling the, the, the children to come in and to play with them and having a program and doing sports together. Mm -hmm. So I think this is <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yes, there's some questions. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank you and, and to all uh, of, of the conference who presented. And to me, it was so inspiring and it's so obvious you love what you do and you give it to the public. So thank you very much for this uh, uh, leading example. And the question is, how can we make happen that even more people like you and the group who presented uh, get into charge to, to uh, actually uh, have the opportunity to really create a new uh, community in society. What would you suppose? So we are working a lot with best practices and always communicating with the, with the people. So uh, this is mainly our job that we are going to conferences and, and meetings and always presenting our idea and our way to think. So I think this is the, because there's not one, one, one person in charge of building such places, it's everybody, each of us has some task or some, some way how you could influence the, the, the spaces. So it's, I think it's crucial to implement this idea in, in each of us and then everybody can, can make a small step towards in this direction, yeah. What do you think, Charles, that uh, maybe trees and nature and so on has something to do with people, a, re a community, and uh, that is surrounding it? You were telling... I, I am sure that the, if you think of Africa, you know, the palabra tree, 
is the tree is a place where the people gather together to to, um, to express their opinion and eventually conflict, resolve the conflict. So I do believe that it has some uh, something to do with that. But to answer your questions, uh, your question about how can we um, do more. I thought about what the, the first speaker said, the, the landscape, I don't see him, the landscaper from UK. He asked us about what we thought could be done for the, for the best to come with healthy environment. And I thought that probably, of course, uh, uh, people's wish is something important but you cannot wish something that you don't know about. So to me, the problem of nature is a problem of culture. You, you need to be, of course the choice is ours, like, like Diogenes uh, preferring Athens to Sparta. But on the other hand, you have to know about the alternative. And one way to be able to choose between different landscapes is to be able to travel if you, if you stay at home, if you don't move, if you stay in front of your TV, it's over. I mean, so taking care, uh, ta uh, taking care of the fact that people go out and, and watch. Uh, I recently discovered by going to my countryside house, to, to the, the countryside house of my, my grandmother around in the Paris outskirts, by experimenting a new race, um, race um, uh, bike instead of the renting or the car I rent usually, I, I discovered that the outskirts of Paris are hundreds of villages completely hidden from one another. It's terrifying. I mean, the, the roads are corridors. If you stick to your car, you see always the same thing. If you take your bike, or if you go by walk, and you, you see you know, the, 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 the edges from the other way around, you discover plenty of things. And I'm, this, I'm sure, is very important. We have to watch out for the, the, the cities to come, not to be a collection of private worlds. And we have to fight for small paths and middle paths and big paths, you know, all together. It has to be a network that is walkable. I, I will retain this and this, take this back home. Walkable, that's the main, main thing. Hola. Sí, yo primero quería hacer una pregunta también al Charles. Cuando, bueno, Sí. Quan sempre parles de, de tots aquests moviments de terres que fas i amb els arbres existents, voldria saber la problemàtica que tens, perquè moltes vegades nosaltres, quan tenim alguna plaça i tenim algun arbre existent, aquests canvis de nivell, els arbres sempre els afecten. I al final és allò que intentem preservar l'arbre i com que al final li baixem o pugem el nivell de terres o el que sigui, l'arbre s'acaba morint o ho acaba passant. Llavors, una mica, com que vist aquí que, que jugues bastant amb els nivells i amb tot això, una mica, quines estratègies hi poden haver no? per, per solucionar aquests aquesta problemàtica, no? I després també al, al Felip una mica amb, amb la mateixa idea és quan, quan fas aquesta vegetació que entra als edificis, al final necessites un, unes capes de terra o... Vull dir, com, com ho fem això, no? És, és, una mica si ho podíeu respondre. Well, for the groundwork, of course, the first thing to do is to inquire about what is alive because living trees are fragile and they need not to be moved. But on the other hand, if you do a project with certain invariant points, with, with certain points that you cannot change, you will do a better movie. You know, Hollywood, <laughs> with its code, did some marvelous movies. If, if you have no constraint, if, if, you, if you can do anything, what are you going to do? You know, if you, if you have only some liberty, you can try and become clever. <laughs> so first thing to do is to recollect all the things you can do 
you must not, of course, you must not be afraid of changing things. I often say to the students, the, the, the landscape students or architectural students, I, I tell them that if they don't do anything, um, say non assistance à personne en danger. It is like non assisting somebody who is in danger. The, the, everything will change all the same. It, it will change anyway, but it may change without any intention. On the opposite hand, they, they can have an intention. They can make it on purpose. So they should try. And if they don't try, who's going to do it, you know? So they have to try, they have to change. And the thing that cannot change is probably the genuine important things, you know? So, it, it, so it's, it's, this is the, the two uh, extremes. Of course, you have to deal with the existing ground. You have to know what is uh, to be respected. You have to choose the balance and then invent. But you should not refrain from inventing because uh, it will always be worse <laughs> if you don't make it. Um, amb que preguntaves, mm, jo crec que la, la vegetació sobre els edificis o que anida amb l'arquitectura, jo crec que s'ha d'agafar d'una manera diferent. O sigui, no és que nosaltres fem un edifici molt fort amb una capa de terra a dalt perquè pugui haver-hi un pi, no? Això sinó que al millor si nosaltres fem o si sigui, hi han hi han hi han condicions específiques de l'arquitectura que són positives per les plantes o certes plantes i que les fan desenvolupar d'una manera que és proactiva per l'arquitectura i que és inèdita a la naturalesa mateixa, no? Per exemple, a a l'hivernacle que us havia que us he ensenyat, al centre aquests hivernacles a l'aire viciat dels interiors, la renovació d'aire, es llença l'aire cap al pati. El CO2 és aliment per la vegetació i la pròpia vegetació neteja aquest CO2, d'alguna manera se'n beneficia i eh, a, a l'aire es neteja. No? Eh, o l'aigua... Un, 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 un tanc d'aigua a sobre d'un edifici que és capaç de tenir eh, vegetació a sobre i que la va evaporant no? i que això genera un, un, un flux que és bo per la vivenda de baix. No? El que vull dir és que, en realitat, jo crec que la, la vegetació, si no l'agafem com un fet ornamental, sinó com, un, com una capa complementària a l'arquitectura, s'acaba desenvolupant de formes inventives, que han de ser inventives, no? Diguem, perquè han de ser noves, perquè no es tornen així a la naturalesa, perquè la naturalesa té unes altres condicionants. I això, la tecnologia de l'agricultura, de la, de la, de la, sobretot de l'agricultura intensiva, etc., ens dona moltes pautes, però moltes altres eh, són coses que són eh, que s'estan creant en aquest moment eh, també, diguem, i que eh, són les que utilitzem. I can add something to what I just said. Uh, it's very important uh, to be uh, careful about what we have in hands. I mean, if you look at an aerial photography, today, except in the forest, if you see trees, they have been planted. The fact that they did not move is something extraordinarily precious because they are testifying for several Pro projects that were there before. And a way not to be mistaken with the next project is to know about the previous project in the same place. Michel Corajou, who I know, uh, you, you know, <laughs> because he came to Barcelona several times and he talked about Barcelona with great, great emotion. Michel Corajou said, doing a, a, a project, a landscape project, is like entering the conversation without cutting the flow. 
You have to listen to what is said before you come. And once you have understood who is saying what, then you can make your point. But it has to be that way. Hola, buenas tardes. Esta es una pregunta para Amelia Svelinga. Eh, bueno, desde un poco la experiencia que vivimos en Barcelona, de, de muchos sitios que se están ocupando o que incluso el ayuntamiento promueve que haya áreas eh, pues, que antigua, o vamos, trozos de, de tierra eh, que está, no están ocupados y se ceden a colectivos eh, para su explotación, ya sea como huerto urbano o como eh, actividad social… Eh, ¿Cuál es la perspectiva de, del Ayuntamiento de Viena o cómo ha hablado antes de un proyecto que, que había sido fomentado que, por, por una ocupación? Pero, eh, ¿cómo es la, la visión eh, conjunta en, en Viena? ¿no? ¿Qué se hace para apoyar a ese tipo de iniciativas o si se hace o cómo se hace? Um, the, the city of Vienna is um, not happy about occupied lots or squatted lots. So we have the, the police have the, has the, um, so if, if a lot or a building is squatted, the police should, um, how is it called? Huh? Evacuate. Evacuate, yeah, the building and the lot at the, at the first day. So they may not stay there for, for a longer time. In the one project I showed on the Nordbahnhof, the, the urban development area, I think nobody knew about the, the, the squatted lots, only the landowner. Um, so it is, there are two sides, because on the one hand, we really want to, to, um, to uh, we want people to be part of the planning process and to be active and to involve themselves in the planning process and to bring ideas, but only at a specific point at the development process. So we, it's more or less that we don't want them to be active any time at, at the project. So um, there are two sides and we tried, so the project coordination where I'm working at, we try to, to take the ideas of the people and, and help them to, um, Um, to turn the ideas into reality. So, but it's um, at city administration there are working six, uh, 60,000 people, and I think it really depends on who who you're asking if so if it's really wanted to people to to participate in the planning process. So, um, for example, with urban, urban gardening, um, there are several lots which are given to the people. They may um, plant their own um, vegetables, but um, we have only one, which is really built from the people itself, so on, the, on the spot really chosen by the people itself. Um, all the other spots were um, given from the, from the municipality to them. So it's, there are always two sides of that, yeah. Okay, I think we are over time, so thank you very much. Let's see the next conflict, thank you.